Alright, so in case most of you didn't know, the first time I tried to review Pac-Man, it was not exactly an easy feat. Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures was, in my opinion, a pretty bad Pac-Man platformer. In overall, I didn't think it was the worst game I've ever played, but compared to the rest of the Pac-Man games I played, this barely felt like a Pac-Man game. Sure, it had some qualities, but for the most part, it was just a generic and bland platformer. But not every Pac-Man platformer has to be bad. Many have tried, and some have succeeded. One team in particular was the one that developed a series of games that I like to call the Pac-Man World Trilogy. Over the next few weeks of Let's Tackle, I will be reviewing all three Pac-Man World games. That's right, Pac-Man World, Pac-Man World 2, and Pac-Man World 3. Maybe if I'm at it, I'll also take a look at some other games, like Pac-Man World Rally and this Pac-Man Maze Madness. Though, again, I'm not quite sure. So, let's begin with the first game in the series, Pac-Man World 1, for the PlayStation 1. The game came out in 1999, and it was a celebration to celebrate Pac-Man's 20th anniversary. At the time, we already had a bunch of other platforming games like Spyro 2, Ripto's Rage, but I think Pac-Man World filled in that gap pretty well. Out of all the platform games I played that year, Pac-Man World was probably one of my favorites. It's not the best platforming game, or nor even the best PS1 game of all time, but compared to other things I've seen, Pac-Man World does a very good job at trying to be a platformer. The story in this game is that Pac-Man's family has been taken by ghosts on Pac-Man's 20th birthday, so now Pac-Man has to embark on a journey to save his family and stop this mysterious villain known as Talkman. Okay, well that story did not take much process to get through. And that's one thing I like. The story is very simple. It doesn't have to be anything truly detailed, as long as it's still fun and enjoyable. The game itself, though, is incredibly fun. The game itself basically says it's a 3D platformer, though for the most part, Pac-Man World kind of plays like a 2D platformer, which I suppose isn't really a bad thing, as there are still some 3D elements thrown into the game as well. And of course, since this is a Pac-Man game, it bears a lot of references to the original Pac-Man games. Sometimes you'll have to grab power pellets to fight ghosts, and you'll have to eat pack dots in order to gain the game 100%, or just use them as ammunition. It's basically a nice throwaway to the original Pac-Man. Not only that, but you you can also play the original Pac-Man on the main menu. Pac-Man World has 23 levels to play through, and if you complete four of them, you'll also come across a boss fight, which will also release one of your family members. The moment you step through the first level, you'll know that the graphics in this game are surprisingly very, very detailed. I mean, I don't think it's the best looking PS1 game I've ever played, but compared to all the other PS1 games I have played, Pac-Man World is probably one of the best looking games. The models look surprisingly good, and the backgrounds look just as detailed as the character models. Especially for a hardware like this, this is pretty, pretty impressive. And remember when I said the game does nice references to the original Pac-Man? That's also the case for the music as well. While the sound the soundtrack also has some remixes of previous Pac-Man games, it actually also has some new tracks to listen to. A lot of these tracks are very enjoyable. Not only do they fit the levels perfectly, but they're also pretty freaking catchy to listen to. Now, of course, since this is a 3D platformer, Pac-Man is, of course, packed with several different moves. Sure, he can eat ghosts and jump around and all that sort, but Pac-Man also has a few abilities. His main move is the Butt Bounce, which is used to attack enemies and activate switches. Pac-Man also has a Rev Roll, which is also used to attack enemies and is also used to get up high hills. Though, is it me, or does the Rev Roll kind of remind me of Sonic the Hedgehog? Oh well, I will say, this game does a much better job referencing Sonic the Hedgehog than Pac-Man the Ghost Adventures, so I'll say that right now. Like I said before, Pac-Man can actually use his pack dots as a weapon. He can throw them at enemies, and he can even use them as a projectile. Finally, adding the power pellets as a use to this game. With big levels to explore, there are also several things to collect. You've got the occasional fruit, of course, which is a nice throwaway to the original Pac-Man, but you've also got letters to collect that spell out Pac-Man's name. If you collect all six letters, you'll be taken to a special level, which you can use to get extra lives. And trust me, this game is very, very challenging, so you are going to need those extra lives. Of course, as well as fruit, there's also these special Galaxian tokens you can collect. If you collect one, you'll actually be transported to a maze, which is a very nice reference Again, to the original Pac-Man. Damn, this game just does such a good job of referencing the original Pac-Man games, doesn't it? As for the boss fights, they're actually surprisingly challenging. I know that making a boss challenging is always a tough decision, because you always need to make sure that the boss fights are not only challenging, but also fun. And are these boss fights fun? Definitely. 
Like I said before, you are going to need those extra lives because the boss fights in this game are intense. And of course, this is also a nice game for kids to pick up as well. If I did have one problem with this game, it would probably be that there is a lot of backtracking. Now, you know I don't usually like games that have backtracking like Crash Bandicoot or Super Mario Brothers, but this game in particular has quite a bit of backtracking, especially since you have to go, in to go back, collect keys, and free your family. It is pretty annoying. But honestly, that's really the only problem I have with Pac-Man World. I'll say that, for the most part, Pac-Man is a very, very enjoyable series, and if you're a fan of the Pac-Man series, you are absolutely going to love this game, even if you're a fan of platformers as well. If you've got a PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, whatever, if you happen to see this game somewhere, I recommend you give it a play. Pac-Man World is one of those games that's not often remembered by many people, especially with the likes of Super Mario 64, but honestly, Pac-Man World just as well rivals games like Super Mario 64 and maybe even Sonic Adventure. Do I think this game is better than Pac-Man The Ghostly Adventures? Absolutely. There is so much in this game that references the original Pac-Man game, and you really do feel like you're playing a three-dimensional platformer. Pac-Man World is a very enjoyable game, and if you're a fan of the Pac-Man series, I definitely recommend you give this a shot. If you don't like this game, that's totally fine, that's just my opinion. But if you happen to see a copy of this game anywhere, and if you've got any of those consoles I just mentioned, play it. Because trust me, if you love Super Mario 64, or Crash Bandicoot, or just pretty much any platforming ever, you will love this game. Thanks for watching Yoshi Players, and join me in part 2 when we take a look at Pac-Man World 2.